<laughs> okay. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, Keep. All right, so uh, are you actually recording right now? All right, there's a warning to everybody in the room. This is the mini Spanish Inquisition just for Westercon. Be aware that this is being recorded and it will be posted probably on my own personal YouTube channel because if there's a Westercon YouTube channel, I don't know about it. Um, so I, and I don't know when it'll be posted. It will be depending on my time and bandwidth availability. Uh, we are here only for Westercons and any bids. By any chance, is there anybody here interested in bidding for a future Westercon? Oh, shucks. Ah. Darn it. I was really hoping we'd have an answer of yes to that question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> because it's been too many, too many years where it's... Come down to the wire. Come down to, well, beyond the wire. Well, it's come down in January that somebody decided that was, they're going to do it. Okay. That was part of the reason I pushed to do this, was hoping it would generate a bid or encourage somebody to bid early. <laughs> well, we'll talk about bids when we have time afterwards. Yeah. Okay, so this is being recorded, and we thank Lisa Hayes for doing the recording. So fantastic. Yeah. I am Kevin Stanley. I am the chair of Westercon 74 in 2021, and I get to talk second, but I started this. And this That's is Sally. Good. This I'm is Sally, Sally, and I'm the chair of Westercon 73 that we decided to bid on in, a jan in a January because nobody else was doing it. So we're getting closer. We've got four or six months to put on a convention. We are making a lot of good progress. So. Um, anyway, convention is on July 2nd through 5th of 2020 at the Doubletree Hotel in Federal Way, or no, it's SeaTac, and it's right across the street from the hotel, so if people want to come fly in, they just have to walk across the street from the airport and they're at the hotel. Um, what else have I got here? Actually, I know everybody's usually interested in hotels, what's happening with the hotel. So Alex, who isn't handling the hotel but has taken a quick course in what's happening with the hotel, is going to tell us all what is going on. Well, the advantage of this hotel is that we know it really well because we're there every uh, April from our restaurant. And we've had uh, two previous Seattle Western Cons at the uh, SeaTac Doubletree. Uh, we were there in 2004 and 2012, and we had tremendous fun there. Um, the hotel is miraculously cheap for Seattle. Uh, we have rooms starting at 134 um, in the, what they call wings. Uh, there's also the tower, which has better views and bigger and nicer rooms, and that's a little bit more expensive. But uh, Seattle is a major global tourist destination, and uh, this is the beginning of the high season, so get, getting things at this rate uh, is just amazing. Um, and for those of you, and, and there's so many things to do in Seattle that uh, it's a great base uh, if you want to do tourism before or after the convention. Um, there isn't much to say because um, we know it really well. We know the function space works. They, they do it for, this, this uh, hotel works for Norwescom, which is like, what, Three, four thousand person convention. Yeah, it's twenty five hundred to three. Right, so they've got plenty of room for us. Um, they've got plenty of uh, rooms for us, and uh, they 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 know and for some reason tolerate and really well. Yeah, if you wanted to know, uh, the reservations are open. Go out to our website, and there's links to it. And I have some flyers along. I'm going to put out there. To you want to find the links. Okay, so I'm going to say um, uh, there may be the usual uh, Fanish thing where uh, the thing that uh, conventions have, where we're not sure that the number of shoulder dates on the website is correct. I mean, they, we just discovered maybe there was an issue that today, and these kind of things happen all the time, and it takes a couple of days to sort out. But um, uh, there's lots of rooms, and, and, and we, we'll have plenty of room for our convention. Um, so if, if you have a problem with registration today, uh, hotel registration today, we will have this fixed, you know, during the week. Uh, and uh, I mentioned uh, Seattle's a great uh, tourist destination, so I'm going to hand it over. What? No, I'm at my own. Wait, he's supposed to get the conversation back. Yeah. Yes. 
Put the microphone back on the stand there, yes, okay. Because I was going to quickly go over our guests of honor because we're really happy. We think we've got a fantastic group. Our writer guest of honor is David Brin. Everybody knows David. Um, they, we've talked to him. He's clearly on board with us. I don't think we're going to have a problem this year. Our artist guest of honor is uh, Rob Carlos. He's a Northwest artist. Uh, he works with, with Norwest Con all the time, so he's real familiar with us and we are with him. He's great. He's a wonderful artist. Our science guest of honor is a very interesting person. That's um, Ethan Siegel. He's a physicist, or what is it? Something like a physicist. Incredibly smart. He's a customer, and he's fun to be around. He is a jokester. And uh, so I think we're going to have a lot of fun with him. Well, our fan guests of honor are actually in the room. <laughs> How about that? Uh, with Kevin Roach and Andy Tram Trumbly. Um, we were going to make some nasty jokes and bop them if they weren't here, but we'll be nice as they are. <laughs> we're we can also make nasty jokes about us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and then uh, we're kind of emphasizing. Um, Cooking this year because uh, we haven't had a, actually an emphasis on filking in a while. So we've got fan guests of honor of Jeff and Maya Bonha. And I know a lot of people who are into filking really, really like him, like them. And that's the, this is the first year in quite a while that we've had an actual filking group. And they're, um, they're not a tack on to a WesterCon like a lot of them are. And they are part of us. We, are, we share the umbrella under SWAC together, and so we're working together. They're part of our staff. They are going to have get their guest of honor. We're going to have concerts. We're going to have cooking, programming, and we're going to have a dedicated filk room for nighttime filking. So Sally's referring to Conflict, which is uh, yeah, an, conflict. Important, an important film convention held in Seattle for, yeah, it, for it's, many years. It's small, and hopefully all their people will come because I think they only had 49 last year. But um, the larger folk in the community around that area is very interested in coming and seeing these people because it, it's the first time that we've had concerts in quite a few years. Yeah. And, uh, well, and we had concerts at Saxon, but that's been a while back. Uh, otherwise, then, then, then our guess is that, um, right here. It is, is hard if you can't read your own book. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, okay, what was yeah, I doing? No, I was just going to say, our dealer's room is now sold out. Of course, it's a small dealer's room because we're not expecting a huge amount of people. Uh, the art show, who is, which is being run by uh, the people that put on the art show at Northwest Con, has had the invites for artists sent out and they're going strong and they're having a good time. Um, we're also working with a Harry Potter kind of group that goes around. They have their own convention and everybody dressed up like Harry Potter characters and they reenact parts of uh, different shows. They approached us in Utah that they wanted to come and do some of that and put on some uh, panels about Harry Potter. And so we're working with them to get them here. Also, I'm working with a, a small group of uh, Star Wars people who go around giving ex exhibitions of fighting, laser sword fighting, and they will teach people who are there also how to do it. And so they're a lot of fun. When I was in Bacon, they were there, and they were the head of the convention. Um, how do you piece on legs? I don't know. <laughs> and we've, we've got we've got good backing of the greater fandom in, in our area. We're all inclusive. Besides regular science fiction conventions, we have the furry conventions and we have the LGBTQ. Anyway, <laughs> LGBTQ um, people TIA. also so on. And TV, or whatever. But anyway, they're also helping on the convention. Their vice chair. So, um, and the furries are planning, they, they even have a headless lounge, so we will have a lot of them 
around in costumes, and then they, you know, if you don't know what the head is, head this lounge is, it's sort of like a leaf blower in a stack, and you put your heads on top of it to dry them out. Think of the backstage. It's backstage. More specifically, backstage. it's a place you can take up your head where no one sees you without your head. Right, and then you lay lounge around until your head is dry. <laughs> and your dryer, And your dryer. Yes. And you're dryer. Um, but it, it's probably be in a room that if you're really interested, you can go see it. <laughs> so, because I, I, I got to do that. And it's, like, it's really kind of interesting to see what they, they're using. Um, Mark, Mark, let's see, no, further guest, possibly coming, is so friends of Angela. So take this mic and tell them what, who's coming. I have a number of friends from JPL who reached out to me to ask to come and do some presentations at our Western Con on their planetary sciences. One of the people involved has driven curiosity and will tell you the story of how it does not corner and report the dam. We also have a number of other science people that we're asking to participate. Amongst them are our guest of honor. Hi, Kevin. And um, we have somebody from Facebook that's agreed to participate, one of their uh, material scientists. And we have uh, a couple of other people in Seattle and the LA area that we're reaching out to as well. So we will have a very tech and science heavy program here. Is it called a thread or a channel track? Track. Sorry, <laughs> brain fade. We will have a very heavy science and technical track of programming at Western College, which is fairly unusual. Who's doing the program? Right. Give it Reese Jones. So, uh, so it will also be a very literary convention. Just give it as uh, a right community. Give it. Give it. Oh. Uh, for some reason, she uses give it as her Spanish name, legal name, Brandon. Well, I know who it is. I just don't hear any of yours. I think that's it. Yeah. Is that it? No, there's one more. They stopped talking. Uh, Mara, she's just going to give you a little bit of what, what you can do in Seattle. So, since what, while you're in Seattle, you, um, you might want to come a couple days early or stay a couple days late. There's Mopop which is the former Science Fiction Museum and Experience Music Project, the Living Computer Museum, including the hardware that put men on the moon, Craze, computers that run on punch cards, <coughs> and of course Pike Place Market, which is worth visiting just to watch the fishmongers throw fish. It sounds weird, but, if you, but it's really worth seeing. And Museum of Flight. Museum of Flight. And of course, we have awesome restaurants, um, best salmon I've ever had, and the underground tour, where we can assure you that the toilets no longer explode. Thank you. And that's kind of our presentation, so I guess we can... Do you want to do questions after we so talk? Why don't we do questions after? Because we might both too. have the same, different yeah. answers to the same question. Right. We might. Okay, now we get to find out whether the untested tech actually works. And if it doesn't, that's okay, but it's stuff that we've used before, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Whoops, I gotta get out of the way. Yes, that has it. Okay, that's, that's a start. Now, the other thing is we haven't tested the volume, so if it's too loud, I may have to do something about that. Let's find out. Problem, though. See, again, we couldn't Sorry, test it. We couldn't test it because we didn't have any time in here. So let's try that again with Lisa there. Usually the problem with this is it's not loud enough.
<laughs> Thank you, folks. Um, that's just our, there's more to, there are more people involved than that, but that was our opening title sequence right after we won uh, in, uh, in Utah. Uh, we are WesterCon 74. We are in, being held in Tonopah, Nevada, which has nothing to do with Tonopah, Arizona. Uh, and it is, we are the following year, 2021. Coincidentally, because of the way the calendar works out, we're on the exact same dates, July 2nd through the 5th. We will be the Friday through the Monday, and uh, I've got a whole lot of slides that we won't have time to go for, but there's the first question most people ask. <coughs> Tonopah is a small town in west central Nevada. We are about halfway between Reno and Las Vegas. We are going to be a very different Westercon. We've been saying that from the beginning while we were bidding. And somehow, 60% of the voters decided that, well, okay, we'll go with something different. I am very much looking forward to coming up to Seattle and having a great time at SeaTac. It's going to be a great convention. And, uh, I, and, 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 and I'm working for that. Yeah, well, <laughs> Sally's one of the advisors on our committee. But we're going to be really different. Um, but I'm gonna, there's our convention center. It's a, yes, Tonopah has a small convention center. I said it's a very small convention center. It's got a, a central hall and four rooms. Uh, four other rooms. We anticipate a maximum attendance of 450 people, although we're, our real goal is to just become the largest uh, WesterCon to date in Nevada. There is only one target on that, I'll admit. You know. <laughs> but uh, it, you know, there's, there's Lisa and I walking out in front of it, we're entering the convention center, sitting there. We, and then we have a bunch of slides that I'm going to go quickly through just without talking to them here, showing you the main hall, the convention center, the main stage. Uh, this is not set up for the way we're likely to use it, but that in fact, that I want to say this though, this big hall you see right here uh, is going to be where the convention hospitality is. Instead of, we're going to be having a fairly um, uh, hospitality focused convention. And although I may be the captain of this ship, the person really running the show is the cruise director, Lisa Hayes. Come over here, Lisa. And, and pick up that odd microphone if you like and stand over if you want to talk to this here. Um, uh, she's running hospitality. Yeah, you can talk into it. And we're planning to have, uh, uh, we're not going to have guests of honor. That allows us to keep the membership costs down. Holding this in a convention center that only costs $3,000 to rent. Yes, yes, that's all. Including the use of, perhaps you can see it in the back, we'll show it to you later, a, full ki a kitchen and a bar that we'll be using. These are the two function rooms in the convention center. We also have space in the old Tonopah Library and the Mizpah Club, which is 450 feet away. Okay. That's a big question about it. Oh, it's not a pup tent, a parking lot, and yes, we do actually have indoor plumbing. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a serious question that it has come up many times. Yeah, okay. Yes, believe it or not, people actually live in places that have populations of less than a million. That's one of the issues involved here. This is one of the neat things about this convention center is that this, there are, there's built-in, in, hanging from the, the ceiling, built-in projectors and screens uh, that we can connect to in each room. That helps a lot of that stuff. The convention center includes internet connectivity. It's free. We're going to be testing some of that as well. Now, um, this is the old library. Um, it's next to the new library. So the old library has a lounge in the middle of it that they said that'd be really nice for things like small author reading, small group discussions. And it, again, about 450 feet away. Um, Tonopah's downtown, for all that you will in fact have to go outside, is not that big, okay? It's, it's uh, as we've said before, you could have fit the entirety of downtown Tonopah inside the XL Convention Center where the 2014 World Con was at. Uh, the hotels would stick up out the roof, but okay, yeah. Um, there, there's our walking distances, you know. That, uh, if you go to the website, you'll find a lot of these things, westercon74.org. Um, and I use, when I do these walking distances, I'm trying very hard to use 88 compliant routes with where there's no stairs or steps or where you're going to have to go to ramps and so on. The largest single function room is that, that, that isn't that main hall where we'll have the opening and closing ceremonies. And I think we're going to probably hold the WesterCon business meeting in there, but it's only 10 minutes long, so don't worry about it. Um, there's a hundred. We'll serve extra popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, that's one of the <laughs> popcorn. Though. The 150 seat function room in the Mizpah Club, uh, say about 900 feet away. 
Um, the Mispah Club is the casino located next to our main hotel, the Mispah Hotel. Uh, but it, you don't have to go through the smoking casino to get to the function room, which is upstairs. And yes, there is an elevator in it. So we have elevators, we have stairs, we have running water. We have electricity. Water. We have electricity. We have absolutely free parking. Totally free in all cases, unless you have to plug your car into a car charger, but then you're paying for the electricity. There is a charge for that. So to speak. <laughs> There's a walking. It's not a bathroom. That's correct, yes. Um, this, this is, I'm actually showing the walk to get you from the convention center entrance down to the Miss Pot Club. And it has, I have to admit, it has that funny little dog leg in it for, for the ADA compliance because unfortunately where you see the root of that L, there is a set of steps. And the only way to avoid them is to go down and back up around the ramp. So uh, it's a little shorter if you don't, if stairs are okay. This is one of the neat things about our main hall. There's a bar in here. That's ours to use. Okay. I can see someone who's looking at it very closely. That's right. <laughs> um, this convention center doesn't charge for corkage or forkage or require to use outside caterers or, or outside contractors of any sort. It's a building we rent. There are no liquor licensing requirements. Yes, you got to be careful. Yes, sir. Don't serve underage people, please. We are asking you. We're going to hold. There's our just hospitality vision. The hospitality in the convention center, including par groups hosting parties, will host parties here in this big space. Sort of like the areas that were used in London and Kansas City, but done right and without all those extra charges and all those annoying restrictions on it. Bring what you want. We encourage you to bring it and serve it. Well, matter of fact, the vision I have is if you're going to hold a party, hospitality will suggest you don't bother with plates, cups, soda, coffee, water. We'll provide that for you. That's right. All those things that you might have as side issues, hospitality will be there to provide them for you with no problem. Just you ask. You bring your specialty stuff. And I see that bar there. I'm gonna, I will come back to these, some of these things here, but our, our mixologists, Kevin, Kevin Roche and Andy Trimbley, will be in charge of the bar, I, we, we expect. And we, ex we will be in charge of bar planning. Bar planning. Is we're we're gonna, we may not be in charge of bar hosting. Well, it's right. going to be a shared fun space anyway with the groups holding parties. Before I go on, you have a question, Linda? Well, oh, it doesn't bother me one way or the other, but um, for those who smoke marijuana, is it legal in Nevada? Nevada is as legal as it is in California, and they're the same restrictions. And in Washington. And in Washington, there you go, yeah. Um, there's a look from behind, uh, behind the bar space there, so you... Yay, hey, sinks. Sinks. There's, a, there's an ice... Okay, there is not... Okay, there's, there's not an ice maker behind the bar, but there's a commercial ice maker in the uh, kitchen, so we can get the ice... And maker. there's an ice holder. There's the ice oh, holder. There's a big ice holding ice area there, okay. Power, there's power... Oh, I like the power as well. well. Okay, there's the kitchen. Those are, those are refrigerators or also warmers that can be set either way. So you can keep cold food cold and hot food hot. It's got a large microwave oven, a, a commercial ice maker, commercial dishwashers, and, a, and we'll see it in a moment, a, di a service window connecting into the main hall that doesn't have like cooking grills or anything like that, except, we'll get, except for a barbecue we'll show you in a moment. There's a barbecue. There's a barbecue grill built into the outside wall of a convention center. And we're gonna, and our deputy head of uh, hospitality wants to hold a barbecue, and we may do more than one. And if you have some ideas for holding parties that involve barbecues, great. We're also hoping to hold outdoor functions open to the public as a front face. We want the community to love us, which is going to be easy. And there's our hotels, our main hotels downtown. Um, the convention center uh, in this view is just barely out of shot to the left of that building that looks like it has a dome on it. So just a little bit to the left of that. The uh, there are about okay there are about 500 hotel rooms in town of around 200 of which are close. The rest are between a half a mile and a mile away. Um, but that's it in Tonopah. Frankly, the next nearest town is 30 miles away and has 30 hotel rooms. The next one after that's 120 miles away and has lots of rooms. But commuting from Bishop is a bad idea. But there's, a down, there, there's an outline, a map of it, there, of the downtown area. The stars are the four downtown hotels. Um, the, I'm not showing it in here, but the Mispah, and I'll show it in a moment, also has a, a small uh, uh, hostel. hostel. There's the, the Mispah Hotel is a beautiful, restored, historic hotel, turn-of-the-century hotel. Um, 
Got lots of rooms, got a restaurant, a dining room we're working on. Thank you guys. We're hoping to have that for special events and we might that may be where you pay for breakfast from the hotel for say a breakfast buffet. Yeah, we're looking at the, the, the downstairs area there, this this area here, the dining room, the, the Jack Dempsey room. Because Jack Dempsey was said to, I believe he uh, worked as a bartender, or maybe a, bar, a bouncer actually at one time here. Uh, the Jack Dempsey room is where we, it was a beautiful room, we've got to figure out a way to use it somehow. Uh, back behind the hotel is a is a 10 room hostel, that's going to be probably the cheapest accommodations in town. But, and I expect, and people ask this, I expect hotel rooms to rates to start, not counting the hostel, starting at around $60 a night going up to maybe 130 depending on which, which place you go to. Uh, the Velvada Hotel is a, was an office building, the Miss